Um, sorry, I'm kind of sick. Um, I, my part of the Gishin's uh, report is uh, the orphans. Um, basically, the orphanage is located about an hour away from Bangkok. Um, these kids, they go to the Khao Pai Public School, which is about 10 minutes away from the orphanage that they live at. Um, as Pastor David kind of touched upon it in his um, section, but um, Pastor Paul's um, parents, they founded the ministry back in 1976 um, on basically 250 acres of land. And the orphanage, the kids range anywhere from kindergarten to high school. Um, Basically, they have their, they, they're responsible for their own chores. Um, they come home, they change. Um, there's about 30, 33 um, children. Basically, all of these children were either deserted or like handed over to the orphanage because, for, because their parents weren't capable of raising them, uh, primarily due to like alcohol and drugs. Um, and let's see, um, some technical difficulty. On, but um, I guess I'll do pictures later. Okay, basically when we first met them, we left here on Sunday, but with traveling time and crossing over different time zones, we actually got there on Tuesday night. Um, that night, we actually got to meet the orphans briefly for about half an hour. Um, the orphans were actually very shy when we first met them, um, but the guys actually broke ice with the little boys by playing around football by playing football. They actually had no idea what football is. Their version of football is uh, soccer. Soccer, which is like one of the main, which is like the main sport in Thailand. Um, actually, the kids were very athletic, but they played very rough. Um, and the girls actually broke ice by kind of having like a conversation in Thailand, like in Thai, like what is your name? And we totally killed off their names. Their names are ridiculously like long, so they all have like nicknames. I guess I'll just go into um, basically the orphans themselves. Um, although they play very rough, um, it was surprising to see how well behaved they are uh, when it comes to like worship services, you know, Bible studies or group meetings or any other like church activities. They're actually very well behaved. Um, and basically these orphans, they all basically, like there's so much land and they just roam around really okay. I guess I'll go by pictures now. Basically, this is like the orphanage when we first arrived. Uh, we're actually walking to the dining area, which is about a five minute walk from where we stayed. Just say next. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, this is like the mission center where the church is located inside this building. Next. Okay. And this is basically um, bas where the orphans stay. So there's like different sections of where we stayed, where the actual center is, where the church is, and then where the orphans stay. And these are basically some of the orphans that we got to meet. This is the guys breaking ice basically by playing football. Um, and they're all very, very rough. They like to play rough, these kids. And basically at night after they play, um, they have to come in and do their homework for the next day. And, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, these orphans, they roam around freely upon the land, and one would say that they were very, they were trained well, and they were well disciplined for church, but in a way, I think that they're well behaved in the fact that most of them are actually interested in maybe searching for a parent in God because um, they don't have parents. And so this, this, this leads us into Wednesday night service. Um, the, during the service, um, these orphans were actually like screaming out stuff and we had no idea what it was. But later on we found out that it was actually the hymns, the number of the hymns they actually wanted to sing. Because it was a presider in the front um, and one, after one song is done, one child screams out a number to, uh, to sing a particular hymn, and Pastor Paul actually said that the children knew more hymns than him himself. So this is, I don't have a lot of pictures, 
of the Wednesday night service. Um, and basically after, it, after Wednesday night service, there was Sang's testimony. We actually had Sang go up and give his testimony to um, the church with Pastor Paul uh, translating it in Thai. And you know, basically encour encouraging the orphans to find their father in God. And at the end, um, the orphans, we all sectioned off and we had orphans and seminary students, and we actually took time to pray. Um, we all didn't know what we were praying about, um, because, in the sense that there's a language barrier, so the kids are praying in Thai, we're praying in English for them, um, but it was a very, I think, a very touching moment, um, and basically the children saw our tears, and basically our hearts split open for God and for them as well. And there was actually one moment for me when um, this girl just ran up, just came to me, took my hand, and was saying something in Thai. I actually had no idea what she was saying. So one of the seminary students actually translated that she wanted me to pray for, you know, strength and wisdom for all of the students, um, that, well, all the uh, orphans that were there. So that was just a really touching moment. And I think at that time, um, once we prayed, that pretty much changed the dynamic of all of our relationships there. Um, yeah, and this is basically the orphans, um, you know, where they clean their stuff. And this is just the orphans, you know, climbing around, playing outside. Okay. We basically had one night where we actually, um, through donations and stuff, we actually brought, clean, um, you know, teeth cleaning stuff, like uh, fluoride. Um, a lot of them, many of them, if not all of them, had cavities, a lot of cavities. Um, and basically it made us see that they barely had any of like the essential necessities. Um, there was, they had very poor hygiene, but obviously theirs was better than Sang's, because Sang never brushes his teeth at night. <laughs> um, and they pretty much live in very bad conditions as well. So each night after we um, play with them, they go back to their own homework. But this was one night when we actually this is where Erica, someone who was actually teaching the kids how to brush their teeth. So she taught saying as well. Okay. There we go. He's learning how to do it on his own, teaching the little orphan. She is actually, her name is Kai Wan. Her, name, her nickname is Pia. She's the youngest girl there. Um, so she's kind of mad, I think. Okay, and then this leads us into basically Sunday, where we actually, Pastor David actually showed you guys a clip of them singing. Um, we're seated around together, um, getting ready for them to have like their small Bible study in Thai. Okay, there's like a little boy flipping open um, his Thai Bible. Okay, and basically, we also had a water gun fight. Um, we brought little water gun toys to them, and on the last night, I think on Monday actually, we handed them out, um, but this small water pistol gun fight turned into bottles and buckets of water being thrown at each other. Um, what was just a time of fun really became a time of encouragement as well. Um, Pastor Paul told us that you know the orphans don't really, don't, didn't much have much fun in a very long time. You know, it's always the same routine every day um, based and it was really encouraging to see like this kind of like senseless free fun where you know children play without a care in the world you know and this is something that you know Sonia and I actually said to each other there because we were the only two girls getting drenched while Rebecca and Erica were all just <laughs> taking pictures because they already showered and they didn't want to shower again um, so you know basically we we also were the same you know, we, we didn't have a care of the world, you know, we didn't have a care for what was happening here at home, you know, it was just, you know, a good time there. Um, 